to be monogamous with a chain or polygynous with full chest. Another drama at the gravesite, a mourning wife, her defensive children, a known or unknown other woman, children that bear a photocopy-like resemblance to the man laid to rest, factions in the extended family, tension, uncertainty. I could go on painting the scenario, but at one time or the other, we have all heard stories like this that touch. Bringing us to my advocacy, isn't it time to be practical? Marriage has been defined as a union of a man and a woman for companion and procreation. However, today the definition has changed globally with different viewpoints, an institution, a partnership, and as a responsibility. Marriage is going through a lot of bashing, with the main bone of contention being whether a man can be monogamous. Is he polygynous by nature, but made monogamous by man? Which is a more natural state? With the prevailing rate of men in monogamous marriages, with at least one other woman in his life, this advocacy is not talking about philandry men, but men who deliberately keep a second or even a third woman in a similar state of matrimony without the document and have children with these women. And on the day he dies, all hell breaks loose. The family is the bedrock of any society, and currently it is facing so many challenges that cannot be all addressed in this advocacy. On this side of the divide, we need to make up our minds what we accept as marriage. We have three types of unions in Nigeria, civil unions, Islamic and traditional marriages. Civil union is based on the adopted legal framework of the British of one woman, one man, which the church subscribes to as standard, while the country retain traditional marriages, which is our culture. In most cases, you have the man marrying both or more women using different methods secretly. Without a clear understanding of what we want to recognize and practice, we're going to keep having unfortunate situations, fractured families, inheritance fights and battles, and unnecessary bad blood. A couple of men have stayed true to who they are and have been clear that they are polygynous and have lived their lives and conducted their affairs, so thereby mitigating drama. The surprises have come when the man has conformed to societal norms. Not a problem, but men who find themselves in this dilemma need to make arrangements while still alive to mitigate the pain and potential damage that could occur after their demise, if not for the women involved, for the sake of the children. Women have an innate need to be recognized along with her children. But as long as the prevailing practice is to bury our heads in the sand on this one, there will always be rancor unless the man settles, provides for her while he's still alive, or reduces his wishes into a will. But then he better have a strong loyal lawyer willing to do his bidding, even in death. Either way, the evil that men do lives, lives after, after death. Hmm. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this table is a shattering table. I have a friend. I, mean, I think I was about 24, and I'm not going to mention his name. Hmm. He was the last born of his family. He was completely pampered, he was loved, and all that. His father died. And lo and behold, on that day, he realized that suddenly, mm -hmm. I'm not the last born again. Mm -hmm. My goodness. He was frightened, mm -hmm. he was oh. shocked, he was upset, mm -hmm. everything came yeah. upon him. Mm -hmm. And he kept saying, oh, so I'm not the last born. <laughs> so, the last born. so while everybody was devastated and scrambling and trying to figure out how, when, where, my friend was just shouting, I'm like, I'm no longer the last one. <laughs> yeah, you're no longer the last one. So I think I think the major issue there is the dishonesty of it. Mm -hmm. That well, is true. what ripples through everybody's veins. And, but, but, but the second yeah. wife knows about it, or the third wife, as the case might be. But I think it's the first wife yeah. that is oblivious mm. of everything. Mm. Who somewhere in her <sighs> mind has revived her husband and felt like, oh, he was a good man, he loved me, provided for me. Then upon his death, you realize that oh, he actually wasn't as but good. But he, as he, he was a good man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I think there's there's always been a problem, and and that's the problem of culture. Mm. Okay. Okay. The, the, the society forces things down our throats. Very true. And um, we don't. Well, the word the word is we don't own those things. We don't decide to be be me. Mm -hmm. So if agree. Mm -hmm. polygamy is the way for me, mm -hmm. why don't I just I come I out oh, and be polygamous? Um, I'm thinking, what would people say? What would this person say? And that is shaping the things I do. So 
So, so we, we need to have a case where more people are doing things with, with a conviction. So many people are going to monogamous marriages or even getting married at all mm. without a conviction. Mm. But yeah, it's, it's the next thing. You are, you are, you are a man, you are going close to 30, you have a job, you have this. Next thing is to get married. You know, I, interesting that we're having this kind of conversation today because in the last few weeks or should I say months, recently I've, I've said questioning the fact that where did the narrative of monogamy come God from? God bless you. That's my... You know, that question that's had said coming and I said, I said asking, okay. I mean, most of my adult life I had pretty much stayed on or the idea or the knowledge of being monogamous mm -hmm. like Omolani or like Omoni said that because of what society had said now please don't get me wrong i'm not saying i want to be polygamous but then i asked myself something really and truly what exactly is the problem with it mm. what is the issue with it because there are situations where i found it very saddening that for especially for men who are married to their first wives and then for whatever reasons not because they want to be philandering eventually do meet somebody or someone and then they actually have a better relationship with the next second or third wife. Now, a lot of women, I've had women who literally want to, like, you know, stone me. And I'm saying that, really, it might be time for us to look at what exactly is it that we want to be. What does culture say? And even for religion, especially the Christian religion, I told some people that the British method or the, or the one we have adopted, what has the, the, the book that we follow, what has it really said about it? I said, and the part about reference to one man, one woman clearly stated was about if you're holding a position within the institution of a church. But in the in prior times for then, we've seen men who had numerous wives, a lot of other people outside of what we call today concubines. And I'm like, this story is a, this narrative is a very dicey narrative. But, really, I, think, but, but I, I do not think something. I have a problem with it. In people. comfort advocacy, comfort, you said uh, when he decides. I think now and here in the 21st century, we should, remo we should remove the fact that it can be a he. In this situation, truly, I think it's both genders. Okay, now that's because that's a dimension. That's a dimension. So, a woman having more than one husband. Of course. And and that, 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 but you're not quite that dicey. But, and that part is the part that I can't think about. Husband, situationship. Okay, so for me, my, my advocacy was coming from what we already have. We haven't even finished dealing with the traditional, <laughs> I want to which shake is the man, man. And I love the way any so you distilled what the advocacy is really about. And that is, please let's be practical. Men, and for me, are not built to be monogamous. We, women have more of that. Because once she settles with a man and all, you know, she's, she guides she her, security, she secures stability. her position, her children, brings everybody up, you know, keeps whatever. The man is meant to, pro, pro, what do you call it, propagate his, um, his uh, lineage. I think that would, if we're more honest, and I don't think it's culture that is our problem. Our culture wants to marry more women. Mm -hmm. Our men want to marry more women. It's the adoption of strange laws that we have come and put and twisted religion yeah, you, into it you, for me that is causing the you problem. Know culture is the way of life, and um, whether you like it or not, what is our culture now mm -hmm. is not is not necessarily our original culture. Mm -hmm. There are okay. so many things that we okay. do as Nigerians okay. that they're just too many. Um, look at even the way we marry. You one person will want to go to church, court. have traditional wedding, go to court. That's true. It, it's it's they all coming hear. from what has become mm. our new culture. I don't know why Kule is quiet. Uh, Kule, yeah, why are you quiet? <laughs> what are your thoughts on this? Oh, Kule, please rock it. We would like to hear Great. your thoughts. So that we go on to uh, you. No, no. Um, for me, you know, whenever I look at the situation of marriage and, you know, people's perspectives, <laughs> um, I would like to say I can be Solomon on one side. I, I don't mean, I'm not in reference to myself. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean men can be Solomon on mm -hmm. one side. And, of course, there are men that would just want to stay with one woman mm. and not want anything mm -hmm. else. And, like we've mentioned, the importation of culture. Funny, um, the people that brought us to culture, you know, when they were being taught religion by the original people that had it, and then they went to do crusades back to collect the Holy Land mm -hmm. from, those people don't have monogamous situations. Sure. Mm. So, it's somewhere along the crusades, the mentality of adoption of a culture mm. but forcefully put by Europe. So. Like we wonder why so, one church yeah. is in Rome. Hmm. So Kunle, nice one. I think you've ended it very well. So now onto politics with Kunle. 
as he is giving us the Ten Commandments of what a political aspirant should live by. Don't go anywhere.